The amount of women who are saying, I don't need a man. Men ain't it. Men don't provide and protect. They just complain. I can do it all myself is exponential on social media and in the workforce. And it's a prime example of toxic femininity at its finest. What this modern day feminist rhetoric has done is create a boss girl movement where women are now struggling with hyper independence. There is now a dichotomy where relying on others, especially men, is seen as a weakness. My name is Hannah Jennerine. I am a professional speaker on gender-based violence and personal development. And in this video, we are going to be dissecting modern day feminism, toxic femininity, and the struggle with hyper-independence. If this is something that you are interested in and you would like to schedule a training for your team or organization, my email, my contact info is in the description down below. So feel free to reach out to me. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. Okay, so first things first, in order for us to really understand the struggle that women are facing with hyper-independence, there are a few concepts and terminologies that we need to dissect. The first is modern day feminism and the boss girl movement. From what I've observed, oppression is the main focus when it comes to current day feminism. Their main argument is that all women in the United States are still oppressed. They argue that their right to an abortion has been taken away from them. They argue that there is still racism, the gender pay gap disproportionately affects women, and that women continue to face discrimination on a daily basis. But to basically sum it up, the current fourth wave feminist ideology has taken a turn when it comes to women's empowerment. By focusing on women's oppression, modern day feminism has created this culture where being dependent on someone, relying on another person, typically a man, is seen as a form of weakness. This desire to challenge traditional gender roles, empower women, and promote independence is what inspired and drove what is called the boss girl movement. And while this initiative advocates for ambition, assertiveness, and the professional success of women, it has created a cultural shift where women now believe that complete self-sufficiency is what they should strive for and what they should embody. I used to subscribe to this narrative. I used to think, yeah, I'm a girl boss. I can do it all. I don't need any help, especially not from a man. When the irony of this is that I contribute most of my professional and personal growth to the men in my life my dad, my mentor, any decision maker who has allowed me the opportunity to work for them has predominantly been men. Needless to say, this rhetoric that modern day feminism has adopted, where women can do it by themselves, is what in part has contributed to the emergence of toxic femininity. While toxic masculinity has received much attention, toxic femininity is often overlooked. And based on my research and my observations, toxic femininity can be described as a pattern where women exhibit self-centered attitudes. They are very self-absorbed and they have little consideration for the needs or experiences of others. They believe that they are the victim in every situation, constantly saying that they are the ones who are wronged, never taking accountability, and believing that they are oppressed in society. This mindset is used to garner sympathy, deflect responsibility, and even manipulate others emotionally. Toxic femininity is also manipulative and hyper-obsessed with beauty and sexuality. A good example of this is the gym TikToks that I've seen, and maybe you've seen them as well, where women will present themselves in an overly sexualized manner and create this narrative where men are objectifying them. When the truth of the matter is that it's not only men that are looking, it's men and women, right? Because everyone's like, interesting. That's such an interesting outfit to wear at the gym. But they think, oh, because I'm wearing this, then nobody should be able to look at me. Nobody should, you know, judge me. But we live in reality. And in reality, when you wear something that is overly sexual, people are going to look and people are going to think that's an interesting outfit choice, right? Like... It's just common sense. And I do wanna add that in these examples, in these scenarios that we see a lot on TikTok or social media, what they do is they undermine genuine efforts to address issues of sexual harassment and sexual assault. Because as we are aware, these are issues that many people are facing and have faced in their lives. Within toxic femininity, there's also the I don't need a man attitude, where women are adopting this dismissive belief towards men and has even contributed to misandry, where negative biases and beliefs are so prominent in our culture today. 
Some common phrases that are being perpetuated include the saying, men are incapable of understanding women's experiences. Men are the abusers. They are all inherently violent and aggressive. We don't need men, they only cause problems. The patriarchy is holding me back and more. And finally, within toxic femininity, there is the shunning of traditional roles like motherhood or belittling other women who strive to get married and have a family. Now, because toxic femininity is all about self-centered attitudes, it doesn't surprise me that women today are struggling with hyper-independence. I, this is actually something that I used to struggle with as well, and it's the belief that women should prioritize their careers and personal achievements above all else. This is where the I don't need a man or anyone to help me attitude comes from. In fact, society often praises independent women who can do it all, but this can create unrealistic expectations and a burden of having to prove oneself constantly. Hyperindependence can lead to isolation, burnout, and an avoidance of asking for help when needed. It perpetuates the myth that women should be able to manage everything on their own which can be exhausting and detrimental to their mental and emotional well-being because they are disconnected from themselves. And their refusal to seek help or support from others, especially men, is what exacerbates this feeling. What's also really interesting is this article that I read from a magazine, and I'll link it down below. But essentially, it explained what it's like being in a relationship with a hyper-independent woman and the effects that it can have on her partner as well. So from the woman's perspective, in the article, the woman's name is Sasha, and she describes that her hyper-independence stemmed from childhood trauma, as well as societal conditioning, such as the modern day feminist rhetoric and movement that's happening. And it was a coping mechanism that she developed that where she believed that the only person that she could rely on was herself. This belief system evolved over time and made her resistant to trusting others and needing control. This struggle prevented her from allowing her partner to help because she perceived that accepting help equated to loss of control because, remember, in her mind, she could do it all herself. She even admits that despite projecting this aura of self-sufficiency, she secretly craved assistance and support. However, her hyper-independence is what takes her down this path of self-sabotage in her relationships, especially intimate relationships, because she has a very difficult time trusting others. Taking a look at a man's perspective, and in the article his name is Daniel, he emphasizes the historical role of men in protecting and providing for their families, and he states that without a clear purpose, men may experience emotional regression. What this means is that when it comes to masculinity, it's important that men feel needed and respected by their partners, and how a lack of this recognition can lead to energetic, emotional, and physical withdrawal. He suggests that with more women becoming hyper-independent, men may unconsciously adopt more feminine traits to balance the relationship dynamics. But this can lead to confusion, because when men respond passively to hyper-independence, it exacerbates the issue with women thinking, yeah, I don't get the support or help I need from my partner, which is why I need to be the one who is in control and not depend on him. And this once again reinforces the entire I don't need a man ideology. In my opinion, the solution to this is restoring the balance of feminine and masculine energies. But the question now is how? How can we as a society contribute to this balance? What is really the issue with gender roles today? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And also, if you have a different perspective than I do, please feel free to share your beliefs. I can't wait to see what you think. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. And I will see you with a new video very soon.